In this video, we're going to go through how to calculate enthalpy using bond energies. There's a few things you're going to need before you start. One is you're going to need a bond enthalpy, or it's called bond association, sometimes table out of your textbook um, or from online. Be careful, they vary, so use the one for your textbook or for what your instructor gave you. The next thing you're going to need is a balanced equation. A lot of times the balanced equation is given to you. I did not because I wanted this to be a little bit harder problem um, so that we practice balancing equations. So the first thing we need to do is do that before we can do anything else. So I have to have a reactant, which in this case is acetylene, and it says it's burning in air. That means I'm going to combust it and add oxygen. The products of a hydrocarbon are carbon dioxide and water. And then right now it's not balanced at this point. If you look, there's two carbon. There's only one here. In fact, I can even drag these in for right now. See how there's two carbon, um, two hydrogen. I'll just kind of put a little list of uh, atoms here. We have two oxygen. I'll just drag those in. We have one carbon on this side, and we have two hydrogen on this side, and one oxygen plus another one, which is three. So right away I can see that I don't have that balanced. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a two here to make an even number for oxygens. That makes me a four hydrogen. So over here I would need to have four, which would be four hydrogen. That would mean I would have two more carbon besides, which is four carbon. So that would be four here that I would produce. That's eight oxygen plus two more, which is 10 on this side. So two is not enough. I need 10. And the, the way to get 10 is by saying that you would have five of these. So I'm going to use these to show you how you balance. I'll just kind of drag these all in here, and then we'll worry about the bonds in a second here. So if I check, I can even check by inspecting, I've got four carbon that will go over to the side. I've got four hydrogen that will go over here and bond in a different molecule with water. I've got 10 oxygen that will be over here, eight, and then two more is 10. Okay, so it's balanced. Next step is we're trying to figure out the heat or the enthalpy of combustion in kilojoules per one mole, and this time per one mole of the acetylene. So this is our, this is our final goal right there is to find that. Hopefully you can make a prediction about the sign that's here because it's a combustion reaction. So typical combustions are exothermic. So what you'd predict is that the sign would be negative, but we'll prove it. So the next thing we have to do is we'll have to figure out how these are bonded because this is just an atom inventory at this point. But I'm going to show you the equation at the bottom here that we're going to use. The enthalpy of any reaction can be predicted or, or, or estimated by taking the sum of all these bonds when I finally make these into molecules, all the bonds that we're going to break, and that's because that's endothermic. All right. And then what we're going to do is we're going to form a bunch of bonds. And those are going to be exothermic, so we're going to subtract that. I'm going to call it BF, just bonds formed. And that's exothermic, which is why we have the negative sign. So that's the equation that we're going to use. So what I have to do next is not just have a bunch of atoms here. I need to figure out how they're bonded. So what you'd need to do is go back to your Vesper structures, your uh, dot structures even before that. Um, you could look them up online and see what, how they're bonded. Maybe the problem showed you how they're bonded. Um, the other thing you can use is a model kit. So like this is how this acetylene is bonded. So what I'm going to do is just kind of hold up the acetylene and I'm going to bond it correctly so that I have the right types of bonds that I need it to break. Okay. Then I also have oxygen, which is a double bond between the two oxygens. So this is going to be a triple bond between the carbons, single bonds between carbon and hydrogen. And this one is going to be a double bond. So I'm going to draw that out by using these little magnets. So I'm going to put these in. And I'm going to show that these have single bonds that have to be broken like that. And then there's a triple bond. So there's my, those are my two acetylene molecules. All right, they may not be perfect, but good enough. You might want to draw that out on your paper so you have the list of the bonds that you're going to be breaking. And then the next thing is we're going to add these two oxygens. I'm just going to put a cute little plus here. And all of these oxygens have double bonds. I'm just going to slide these apart a little bit and slide in all these double bonds. These are all separate from each other, okay? So I'm just gonna slide these bonds in there. So I have how many bonds that are double, and that would be five, okay? So currently, if I wanna make a list, I'm just gonna slide these down. All the bonds that are gonna need to be broken, let's make a list right above this as to what they, what they are, okay? 
So if I want to break all these bonds, let's list them. There's going to be what's called two moles of um, carbon, triple bonded carbon. Okay. Oops, I put the bracket here actually. And get rid of this one. There we go. So you might see it like that instead of the summation. So we have to break that. So I'm just going to pull those off. So I have to break those. I have one, two, three, four single bonds. And we'll call it four moles of carbon to hydrogen single bonds. And then last but not least, we have to break all five. I just made those all that hard work to just break them again. I have five moles of oxygen, oxygen double bonds. Okay. So there's my list of bonds that have to be broken. Now what I need to do is move these molecules over, or let's say molecules, move these atoms over now that are broken, the bonds are broken, and move them to this side and see how they are as products. Okay, so these carbons are gonna move over and what's gonna happen is they're gonna bond to each one of these oxygens twice like this, okay? So I'm just gonna lay them out like that. And then after that happens, we have oxygens here that are left and they're gonna take on these hydrogens and bond. So then again, you have to go back to your dot structures, your Vesper. I'm just gonna show you that, I'll show you how when these pop open, there's my um, acetylene molecule being broken. And when I turn that into a carbon dioxide molecule, I'm just gonna take one of them and show you. So this is what it would be like if you're using the model kits. Here's a CO2, okay? So either we're using the model kits, dot structures, Vesper structures, maybe the, maybe the molecules are drawn out. You've got two double bonds there. So I'm gonna be forming all of these double bonds. So there's two here. So these are the bonds that are gonna be formed. There's two more here, so kind of keep counting them up. And then there's two more here. And then last but not least, there's two more here. So count those, and again, I would draw this on your paper, okay, draw that on your paper. So you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of those bonds that are being formed. So because I'm running out of room, I'm just going to slide down here, okay? So I've got eight moles of carbon to oxygen bonds being formed. And then I have to add that to however water is formed. So I have kind of one left here I can make some water out of, so I'm just popping open these molecules that I have here. So it's the same thing that would happen in, in real life here. There's my water, which has a single bond and a single bond, and it would be bent. So that's why I put those the way they are. So these are two single bonds that would have to be formed, and these are energetically forming. These are giving off energy. This is exothermic, and there's two more. So that's four moles of uh, oxygen-hydrogen bonds. Okay, so this, is, this takes a while. If you don't have the balance equation, it's, it's a much harder problem. And if you don't have any of these uh, molecules drawn out for you correctly bonded, that also makes it harder. So I've chosen a pretty hard problem for us to do here. And then these are my two products. I'm gonna put a little plus between them. So now I've got all the bonds listed. Now I need to go to my table or my chart and I need to look up these numbers so that I can do the math. Okay, I'm gonna slide all these off. So I'm gonna go this way, okay? Seems a little different, but we're gonna go kind of up the board here. So what I'm gonna do is put this up here and say the heat of this whole reaction is gonna be the sum of all of these bonds that are formed. So on, the, on your chart, you'd have to now go find the chart and look it up. And so here's what I found for mine. So two moles of triple bonded carbon-carbon is 839 kilojoules for every one mole and then I found that if I had four moles of carbon hydrogen bonds, those were 413 kilojoules per one mole. And one more, I had to break five moles of oxygen oxygen bonds, and those on my chart were 495 kilojoules for every one mole. Ran out of room again, these problems are kind of long, so I gotta keep going. I'm gonna subtract that from, right down here, eight moles, because remember, this is gonna be exothermic, or maybe you wanna put the negative there, 
Okay. We're going to subtract that from all of the energies that are released from these bonds being formed. So carbon oxygen with carbon dioxide is sometimes unique. Mine the chart says it's 799. If your numbers are different, it's just because the textbook has a little different value, okay? Next, four moles of oxygen hydrogen. So you'd find that, and I have 467 kilojoules per one mole. We're almost to the, the end here. Then what I'm going to do is just give you the two brackets, what the total is. So you can check um, that you're getting these same two uh, totals, okay? And they're both just going to, we'll say just in kilojoules for now. And the totals that I got, I wrote them down. So I have that the first one was 5,805. And then the other one was 8,260. And if I subtract those, I'm just going to check on my calculator too. So you get your calculator uh, to do all this. 5805 minus 8260. And I get negative, which is good. It's what I predicted. 2,455 kilojoules. But be careful. That's if I would have combusted 2 moles with 5 moles, producing 4 and producing 2. Our problem at the very beginning, and we box this out, this is what we're hoping for, per one mole. So what we need to do is we need to divide this by the fact, I'm just going to erase this quick. We need to divide this by the fact that I had two moles of C2H2 in my combustion. So I need to divide those two, or divide, you know, divide this by two. And then I get that the heat of this whole combustion, I'm gonna put actually what it is, it's a combustion, is negative one, two, two, seven point five. And then that would be for per one mole. However, there's one more thing if it was, you know, if te your teacher wants you to have the correct sig figs, I cannot put that as my final answer because I did not have any decimal places when I was adding and subtracting these. So my final answer is one, two, two, eight kilojoules released for every one mole of acetylene that has been combusted. All right, so that's how it goes. That's the hardest it can be in terms of the fact that if it wasn't balanced and written for you, you also had to maybe, you have to draw these out if they weren't given, and then you still have to do all the math and apply the formula correctly. So good luck. Um, hopefully your teacher gave you some more problems to practice.